Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Brooklyn Technical High, uh, Technical, uh, High School Virtual College Fair. My name is Shauna and I'll be your facilitator today. We're so excited to have you participating in today's event. We have some fantastic schools with us today. We'll have, they'll have each six minutes to share about their wonderful institution. Um, and we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening uh, today and as well as Wednesday and Thursday. So make sure you're checking out the schedule on the StriveScan website. This pres presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. I'll now turn it over to our first school, Le Moyne College. Thank you so much, Shauna. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Kwesi Yabba. I'm an admission counselor over at Lemoyne College in Syracuse, New York. Um, and so I'm happy to be here and talk to you a little bit about Lemoyne College today. All right. And so again, my name is Kwesi Yabba. I'm actually a 2016 graduate of the college and recently returned to work as an admission counselor about a year and a half ago, right? Um, a place so special, right, that I had to go back. Um, it's a small college town in the suburbs of Syracuse, New York. Uh, we are the youngest of 26 Jesuit schools um, in the United States, the oldest being Georgetown. Uh, if we're in the New York City area, we're familiar with um, Fordham, right? And we have some all the way in between. And so we are the youngest of those colleges and universities continuing in the wonderful Jesuit tradition of uh, education. As I've mentioned, we are located in Syracuse, New York, right, uh, which is in the central New York area, about four hours north of the New York City region, right, easily accessible by train, bus, uh, and plane. Um, our campus is located in a space where you are about 10 minutes away from everything. And so getting there by bus, you're about 10 minutes away, no problem. Um, and in the Syracuse area, uh, we have something for everybody, right? Everything from the great New York State Fair, which people enjoy very much, right? To our downtown area, shopping centers, um, and also some green spaces. So a little bit of something for everybody, no matter where it is that you are coming from. And so if we don't know, I'm sure we have that question, what it means to be Jesuit. I did bring up that there are some other Jesuit schools in the United States, right? And so what is it that makes a Jesuit education so special? And to any student that asks, I say what it is, is that our education, our mission and the execution of that mission is undergirded um, by two pillars, if you will. And those pillars being service and academic excellence. And so through uh, the Jesuit education offered at Le Moyne, we are pushing our students academically for them to achieve a level of intellectual, uh, intellectual prowess that they can be proud of. Um, and also get you thinking about the ways in which you can contribute to the world, yourself in relation to the world, the world in relation to you, right? All in an effort to make you a well-rounded, educated, person. Um, one of the big pillars at our school is this idea of teaching the whole person, right? So we're not just teaching you in the classroom, but understanding that every experience is an educational experience. Somebody might say that tonight we're just at a virtual college fair, right? Another person might push you to think a little further and consider this even an educational experience. On the campus, our academics, we have about 2,700 students at the undergraduate level and over 150 full-time faculty. 
Our student to teacher ratio is at 13 to one with an average class size of 20. Uh, going back to this idea of teaching the whole person, right? And pushing you to think outside of the classroom, outside of the box, right? We're really big on experiential learning, right? And so uh, students are encouraged to complete at least one internship during their time there. Some students go for more, right? An average of maybe two are completed uh, by the time students do graduate. Um, mentorship is a very big thing on our campus that we take seriously. Research opportunities, internship opportunities, again, career services. Um, over the last few years, we've been consistent at a 96 placement rate, even through COVID, something that we're very proud of. We are subdivided into three schools. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest school our Madden School of Business, which is AACSB accredited, putting us in the top 10% of business, small business schools worldwide, and our Purcell School of Professional Studies, where students uh, who are in fields like nursing and uh, physician assistant studies would pass through. There are over 30 majors and 60 minors on the campus. Uh, we also have our Integral Honors Program, community of entrepreneurs, innovators, and creatives, right? And so we are looking for a spot for everybody, bringing your educational experiences here and expanding you in the ways, uh, in the best ways possible. We have about 85%, oh, excuse me. We have about 85% of our students who do live on the campus. We are a residential campus. And so if you are outside of a 15 mile radius, you are required to be on campus with us, right? That also means the other side of the coin there is that there is no um, housing that you have to apply for and that you can miss an opportunity out on. There's a seat, there's a bed for everybody. Uh, we have about 21 Division II sports on the campus, everything from basketball to lacrosse, uh, soccer to track and cross country. In terms of our application deadline, we have um, it opens on August 1st. Um, our early action deadline being November 15th, where you would learn about your decision a month later. The average student profile is about a 3.4, and we are test optional for all of our programs. Financial hey. aid is awarded. Pardon? Hi. Your time is up, Lemoy College. Ooh, Thank I you. am so sorry. You're fine. If, Thank you. If you have any questions, please do email us. We're always glad to talk to students. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. And also, the Q&A is open for everyone, so feel free to jot any of your questions for Lemoyne College. He is here to answer all your questions. All right, next up is St. John's University. All right, just give me a moment to share my screen. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. All right. Um, just want to make sure everybody can see that. You let me know in the chat or come off that we're all good. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Um, so I, my name is Hector Boys. I'm here to represent St. John's University. I am a graduate of St. John's University for, in 2017 in the Collins College of Professional Studies with a bachelor's degree in sports management. Absolutely loved my time here and um, thoroughly enjoyed it, wrapped around and found myself back on campus. Uh, so at St. John's, the focus definitely is on you. Uh, one of the things that I loved about my experience and time at St. John's is of how much of a family it felt. At St. John's, we are Vincentian Metropolitan. Uh, Metropolitan, Global, and Catholic University. Uh, the Vincentian piece of, about it is uh, the service. We are big on community service and um, servicing New York City, Long Island, um, and all the way up to Westchester. We are Metropolitan, located in Queens, New York, um, about a 15 minute you know, uh, or so uh, bus ride to the LIRR and 15 minute train ride into the city. So, you know, very close to Manhattan. 
we're global. We have campuses uh, around the world, which I'll get into a little bit more. And we are a Catholic university. Although we are a Catholic university, um, our, the religious side of it is definitely not anything that's forced on anyone. Um, however, if you do like to participate in that, we do offer mass uh, once a week on Sunday nights for our students. Uh, as I was talking about our global side of it, we do have uh, campuses in Rome, Paris, and Limerick, Ireland. Uh, we also offer many different opportunities to study abroad. Uh, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to check out um, many of those places in Europe. And if you so find a, a certain program that like you're in love with and you wanna do, um, you can definitely work with uh, your deans in whatever school that you're in, in college, to make sure that you can get into those programs as well and participate in them and get your credits. So here at St. John's, we do boast a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, your professors are gonna know you, right? They'll, they'll call you by name um, and they'll be there to help you out with whatever you want and need. Uh, we are a very big school in terms of athletics, right? We have 17 division one sports. Um, however, if you are not the next Michael Jordan, right, and you just want to play basketball for fun, we do offer intramurals and club sports as well. We have over 180 student organizations on campus, um, which range from everything from cooking to dancing um, to very uh, organizations based on uh, your ethnicity and things of that nature on campus. Uh, one of my favorite things about St. John's is the alumni network, um, nearing almost 200,000 alumni, especially in New York City. Uh, we have a vast alumni network that are all over the world and ready to help out St. John's grads. We have over 100 major programs in our six different colleges, uh, the College of Pharmacy and Health and Sciences, our Collins College of Professional Studies, our St. John's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our School of Education, and our Peter J. Tobin College of Business. What you don't see on there is uh, we also do have a law school on campus, um, which would be that sixth one. So here's just some of our application information and some of those deadlines. Um, in terms of early decision, our deadline for that is November 15th. Our early action deadline is December 1st. We are rolling admission outside of those. So, you know, if you haven't just applied yet, you can always apply and make sure that you get your name into that pool. Our pharmacy regular decision deadline is by February 1st and our bio optometry decision deadline is also February 1st. We are test optional. Um, so, you know, you're more than welcome to apply without taking the SAT or ACT. Um, just because you take the SAT or ACT doesn't mean that you have to submit it, right? Um, you can take the test, see how you do, and then make that decision. We also have many uh, scholarship opportunities on campus, merit scholarships. Almost every student, 99% of our students come in, will get some type of merit scholarship. We have our Catholic school scholarship simply by attending a Catholic school, you can receive that award. Our service award for any student who has a parent that's a firefighter, police officer, or veteran. Uh, alumni scholarship, if you have a brother, sister, mom, grandma that went to St. John's, you get a couple of dollars as well. Our Azanam Catholic scholars and Catholic student scholarships do require applications. And our fine arts scholarships for anybody who's in the fine arts, when you submit your portfolio and it's reviewed, you have the opportunity uh, to get a couple extra dollars as well. Everyone wants to know about our financial aid and St. John's is pretty generous when it comes uh, to financial aid. Um, so uh, like I said, every student will receive some level of merit scholarship. Uh, we definitely encourage our students to make sure that they take care of their FAFSA as soon as possible. So you get an idea of what you're dealing with financially and you can make an informed decision. Um, and with all of that said, uh, I just wanna really mention again, how much I love the university. Um, I graduated in 2017. I coached college basketball for a few years. I taught in middle school, I taught in high school um, and ultimately found myself back at St. John's and truly enjoyed my experience here and, and loving being back as well. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much. Thank you. And again, the Q&A is open. So if you have any questions for our lovely panelists, feel free to take advantage of that today. 
Our next presenter is British of uh, University of British Columbia. All right, thank you very much. Um, hey everyone, my name's Chris Weber. Um, and my pronouns are he, him, and I'm UBC's regional representative right here in the city of New York. Now, before we even get started uh, talking about UBC, I wanna first respectfully acknowledge the traditions and customs of the Silk Okanagan people in whose territory our Okanagan campus is situated. And I like to acknowledge that our Vancouver campus is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. We do land acknowledgments a lot at UBC to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their culture. And in fact, I would encourage you to learn a little bit more about the original caretakers of the lands where you're sitting, because these have been places of living and learning long before our institutions have been around. So if we get started about UBC, I think there's three main things to talk about, and that's the academic excellence, the ideal locations, and the active learning opportunities. And we'll start out with academic excellence. And this is a tough one to talk about because we tend to want to use rankings and numbers, and we all know we don't make our decisions based on rankings. However, yes, we're a top 40 school in the world. We have a number of departments among the top 20 worldwide. There are other uh, facts of the UBC that I think are a lot more important. For instance, we're considered a world leader in terms of combating climate change and sustainability. And that's just a part of who we are. We're obsessed with sustainability. Another very important part about who we are is multicultural diversity. We're considered the most international university in North America with over 18,000 international students from 166 countries. So multicultural DNA, uh, multicultural uh, diversity and sustainability are just in our DNA as an institution. But now let's talk a little more tangibly about where you'll be. And I believe we have some pretty ideal locations. Now, before I talk about UBC specifically, let's talk about Canada for a second, because Canada is the number one country in the world for quality of life, we really prioritize healthcare, both physical and mental. And we prioritize higher education to the extent that our government invests more in our universities than almost any other country in the world bringing the quality way up and the cost way down. And finally, if you're an international student and you graduate from a Canadian institution, you get a three-year work permit where you can stay in the country and use those connections you've made, those resources you've had access to, to start your career. Now, UBC specifically, we have two campuses. These provide very different experiences. The degree is the same, but really it's about finding the right fit for you. So let's talk about them. Our Okanagan campus is mid-size, about 10,000 undergraduate students. It's in a small city. Um, as you can see there, we're surrounded by nature. We're about 20 minutes from downtown Kelowna. What you, what you can expect here is a more close-knit environment, smaller classes, bumping into people you know all the time, that kind of thing. An hour's flight away, we have our Vancouver campus. Now, this is a large campus of 46,000 undergrads in a large city. Now, here we're also surrounded by nature, 25 minutes from downtown Vancouver. And I'll tell you, I was a student on the Vancouver campus once upon a time, and I never felt overwhelmed by those numbers. It didn't feel like me in a sea of people. It was more me and my communities among all these other communities on campus. And now the last thing I said I talk about is active learning, and that's because we're very big fans of getting your hands dirty. And there are many ways you can do this. One of them is research at the undergraduate level. Now, you don't even have to do research in the area you're studying, and that's because we have over half a billion dollars in funding every year for research. There are thousands of projects going on. So you can get involved in research at the undergraduate level in a different area than your major and have maybe a paper published. Or maybe if you're not thinking that academic route, we do have work experience. Now, what I wanna focus on here is cooperative education. So if you've not heard of co-op, that's a way of doing your work experience where you alternate a semester of study with a semester of work. So you do one or the other full time. You don't have to juggle essays and exams and class with going to work. And all co-op positions are paid. They're relevant to what you're studying. They're mentored by someone in the field. So you get real life work experience. You make connections to the extent that 90% of our co-op students get a job offer within a month of graduating. And these jobs are, you know, thousands of students in all different majors doing these. They're in Canada, they're in the US, they're around the world in tech, in banks, in government, in NGOs, you name it. And then if this is all very intense, you know, research and work, you just want to have some fun, that's allowed too. Uh, we do have more varsity titles than any university in Canada, but we also have the largest intramural sports program in Canada. So however sports makes sense to you, whether it's watching or playing, we got you covered. And then um, 
we have hundreds of student run clubs from academic ones, cultural ones, social justice oriented clubs, just fun ones like the magicians and illusionists club. These are great ways of finding communities that make a large experience feel a bit smaller. And if going to Canada isn't international enough for you, we have over 200 study abroad partners in about 45 different countries. So at this point, I think we've covered the academic excellence of an institution with over 260 majors, with ideal locations that really allow you to make, find the right fit for you, with all the active learning opportunities that will really heighten your experience. So all this with the added benefit of a friendly Canadian price tag, which is, I think, compares favorably to out-of-state universities or maybe private universities in the U.S., but at this point, I'm going to stop talking. You know how to find us on social media. You're young. So... I'm done. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. Um, as a reminder, again, the Q&A is open if you have any questions for our wonderful presenters. Our next uh, school is the School of Visual Arts. Awesome. So let me, let's get this pulled up here. All right. Well, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Hank Ehrenfried. I'm the Senior Admissions Counselor here at the School of Visual Arts. Um, you can see on the screen that majors that I interact with, but uh, all the admissions counselors here at SVA know about all of our different departments. And I'm joined by my colleague Farwa, um, who will be answering some questions during the Q&A after. Um, but jumping right into it, so SVA was founded in 1947 as the Illustrators and Cartoonist School, which is 35 students and three faculty. Since then, though, we have grown quite a bit to 3,600 undergraduate students, and we offer 11 unique Bachelors of Fine Arts programs, which are taught by more than 1,000 faculty, all of whom are working professionals in their field. So in addition to the teaching that they do here at SVA, they're also working as animators, fine artists, filmmakers, photographers, designers, and much more. And they teach more than 2,600 courses. Uh, so there's a lot for you to learn here and experiment with during your four years. And when you graduate, you'll join our global alumni of 40,000 creatives across the globe. So we, uh, SVA is in New York City. Uh, you can see here in Manhattan where all of our facilities are, um, and the majority of these buildings that you see marked in red, if we zoom in a little bit, um, are going to be our studio facilities. So things like a ton of different computer labs equipped with all of the hardware and software that you'll need, uh, film studios, printmaking labs, painting studios, green screen cyclorama, bio art lab, and much, much more. Um, we're located on 21st and 23rd Street between 1st and 8th Avenues. Um, in Chelsea and Gramercy Park. Um, and in addition to all those studio facilities, we also have four residence halls. We have three professional gallery spaces, our very own theater here on campus, um, and much, much more. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have 11 unique Bachelors of Fine Arts majors here at SVA. So to clarify, a BFA degree is gonna be a four-year degree program focused primarily in studio coursework. So about 70% of your classes are studio-based and that remaining 30% are your humanities, art history and sciences. And we do ask that students choose a major when they apply. And that's because the majority of these programs here at SVA are dedicated four-year tracks. Meaning that if you say apply to animation, from the moment you arrive, you are taking animation specific coursework or if you're in one of our lens-based programs like film or photography and video, you have a camera in your hands from that first day of classes. We do have four majors though that share a traditional foundation year curriculum, and those are cartooning, design, fine arts, and illustration. And that traditional foundation year is gonna consist of things like drawing, painting, sculpture, digital arts, and much more. Another important part of being here at SVA is all of our faculty who are working professionals. And so they really act as a great connection for students to the industry they're trying to break out into. So I definitely encourage you to take a look at all of our faculty online, see if there's anyone in particular you'd like to work with. Um, and our alumni as well, students are connected to our alumni uh, through our career development office, which also hosts a number of job and career fairs every year. They run an online exclusive jobs board for recent SVA alumni and SVA students. Um, and they really help students connect with companies big, like you see up here, but also smaller studios in the city and around the world as well. Uh, and I'll touch on our application process as well. 
So our application consists of five parts. The first is the application itself. We're not on the Common App, so it's our own form. The next is the $50 application fee, and there are a number of application fee waivers that we accept and recognize. You can also go to start.sva.edu to get uh, see our virtual view book and get some waiver uh, information there as well. The next is the statement of intent, which is 500 words about you, why you want to go to New York, why you want to be at SVA, why you want to study fine art or illustration, whatever it may be your official transcripts. And then the last component is your portfolio that we ask you submit to us through SlideRoom. Uh, and for most of our majors, it is 15 to 20 artworks and three to five of those should be from direct observation. Um, and we are test optional, so we don't need to see those scores. If English is not your primary language, we are still, we are still requiring an English proficiency exam score. Uh, and just some dates and deadlines. December 1st is gonna be our early action deadline. So that's a non-binding decision. Um, but you'll hear from us before the holidays, and that comes with guaranteed housing, early financial aid quote, and early registration. And then to be automatically considered for merit scholarship, you want to apply by February 1st. Uh, there's nothing additional you need to do to be considered for merit scholarship, and those merit scholarship awards at the top range are a little more than half tuition. Uh, but that is it from me. Uh, these are just a few links to keep in mind to stay in touch and keep learning about SVA. Like I said, start.sva.edu is going to be the best place to go to see our virtual view book, which is incredible. And at the very bottom of there, you can get a application fee waiver as well. Um, you can learn about any in-person tours that were, are happening on our campus by going to sva.edu slash visit. If you have any questions, you can, also, you can always reach out to admissions at SVA. But I will stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And again, um, our presenters will be sharing their information in the Q&A chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them and ask them anything while we are talking here today. Our next presenter is Resler, Resler Polytechnic Institute. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Keely Galbraith, and I'm here from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, or RPI. Um, so um, as I said, my name is Keely Galbraith. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions here and also a member of the class of 2014. Um, and I loved it so much, I just had to come back. So. Um, a little bit about RPI. We are located in Troy, New York, um, which is about 15 minutes from Albany. Uh, Troy is a great little city with tons of amazing restaurants um, and cute little shops around. Um, we also have a farmer's market every Saturday that our students love to go to. Um, it moves indoors in the winter, so you can still get um, your farmer's market fix then as well. Um, as I said, we are about 15 minutes from Albany, which is a little bit bigger of a city. Um, so things like concert venues, malls, shopping, movie theaters, all that good stuff um, is available to you there as well. Um, on top of that, we're about three hours from New York City, um, three hours from Boston, and about three and a half from Montreal. So pretty close um, for tons of amazing things for you guys to do um, when you're not busy on campus. Um, so a little bit about RPI, we do have five schools um, in, in, located in RPI. Um, so we do have the School of Architecture, uh, the School of Science, the School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, or HAAS, um, our School of Engineering, and our Lally School of Management. Um, we like to say that these have really low walls. Uh, so this means that you can take courses in all of the different um, schools on campus. So if you are studying engineering, you can still take a science course. Um, you can still dual major in sciences or have a minor in a science as well. Um, same goes for all of the other majors um, available here. Uh, we also do require that all of our students take some humanities courses. Um, this really gives you kind of an interdisciplinary approach. Um, and really allows you to take that STEM focus um, and be able to explain it to everyone who might not be as STEM um, savvy as you are. Um, we do have a ton of research opportunities for our students. Um, we do get over $100 million in research funding each year, which is really awesome. And we are a research university and it is open for our undergraduate students. Um, you can start your research opportunities as early as your freshman year. Um, you really just need to reach out to a professor who's doing something that you're interested in um, and talk with them and they can offer you a position in their lab um, and you can help out with 
with that. Um, more than 900 of our students do participate in undergraduate research. Um, and we do also have a ton of different research areas, not just in the traditional things like sciences, but also in music and technology and how that interplays with our world um, and our lives. So definitely a ton of really awesome opportunities for research. Um, if you're not interested in research, that's totally fine. It's not required at RPI. Um, it's just something that a lot of our students are interested in. Uh, but we do have those who want to go on to do different things that doesn't include research, like politics, um, business, teaching, all that good stuff as well. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is the ARCH program that we have at RPI. This is pretty unique to us. Um, so what this is, is after your sophomore year, you will spend your summer on campus uh, taking junior level courses. It's just your class on campus. Um, so you really get to know your classmates better, you get to know your professors better, um, and really get a great experience. We have a lot of programming for you guys to do as well, um, so it's super awesome. And then you spend either the fall or spring semester of your junior year away. What do you do while you're away? You can study abroad, you can do independent research, you can do internships or co-ops. Um, what's really great about this is it is time neutral, so you're still going to graduate in four years. Uh, sometimes when you do have a co-op or something of that nature, um, it kind of pushes out school, so you might have to stay for an extra semester. Um, with this, you don't have to do that. Um, we've set it up so you can still graduate in the traditional four years. Um, so student life, because you're also there for fun things, not just academics. And um, we do have over 200 clubs and organization and a student run student union. Um, so our students are in control of where this funding goes. Um, so that's really awesome. Over 200 clubs, as I said, we do have Greek life on campus. Um, about 25% of our students participate in Greek life. So it's not a huge thing, but it's definitely available for you. Uh, we have social clubs, professional clubs, academic clubs, um, spiritual, multicultural clubs. So options for everyone on campus um, to get involved and find your people. Um, we do also have 23 varsity athletic teams. Um, we are division three for everything with the exception of men's and women's ice hockey, which is division one. Um, we do also offer intramural and club sports. Um, and we have these from all different ranges from being a professional all the way to just learning how to skate, for example, and wanting to try out hockey. Um, so we have options for everyone. A little bit about our application options. Um, we are on the Common App, the Coalition App, and we do have our own Candidates Choice application. Um, the Candidates Choice application does not play well with Naviance. So if your school uses Naviance, I suggest um, going the Common or Coalition App route. Um, you can see our deadlines listed here. Um, we do have early decision one and two, as well as early action and regular decision. Um, we do what's called a holistic reading at Rensselaer. Um, so we look at everything that you submit to us. Um, so we do look at your grades. Uh, traditionally, our students have A, A minus grades and a challenging curriculum. So things like AP, IB, honors courses, stuff like that. Um, we do also require that students take biology, chemistry, and a lab-based physics course, as well as math up until pre-calc. Um, and higher than that is great, is um, better, but pre-calc is the minimum. Um, we do also look at your extracurricular activities and things like that. Um, really get to know you as a whole person. A little bit about financial aid. 100% um, of our domestic students receive financial aid. Um, we do require the CSS profile and the FAFSA as well. And I see my time is coming to an end. So I'll throw this up there really quick. Uh, be sure to check us out on admissions. We're doing some really awesome things like the ABCs of RPI. Um, so that's always fun to check out. Thanks guys, have a great night. Thank you. And our last presenter is Pace University. All right. All right. OK, so let me get on started. All right. Good afternoon or good evening or even good morning to folks. My name is Kimberly Alonso. I am the Welcome Center Manager for our Pace New York City campus. And naturally, some fun facts about me before we begin. I also actually am a Pace alum. I graduated from Pace in 2013 with my degree in Communication Studies, and I minored in Political Science. And I'm currently a grad student graduating this May with my master's in public administration. So not only do I know a whole lot about PACE, but I really love it here. And I'm excited to introduce you to PACE. Again, if you have questions, add them to the chat. But some quick fun facts about PACE. We are a private multi-campus university. We have about 6,000 students on our New York City campus and about 3,000 undergrad students on our Westchester campus. 
Across our two campuses, we have over 100 plus different majors, over 100 plus different student clubs and organizations. And we have students from over 50 different states and 100 different countries. So to dive on in, the first thing that students at PACE really experience are, are part of is the PACE path. Your PACE path, it is a customized experience. It is centered around your education, your real world experiences outside of the classroom, and your dedicated mentors and advisors who support you along the way. It begins in University 101. That's a course that all of our incoming students take. And it's really where you start to build that framework. So you're going to start asking yourself, maybe, do I want to study abroad? We have so many different opportunities. Pay students actually study abroad at over 50% above the national average. Maybe you want an internship every semester. Our students, they just completed actually 9,000 internships with over 1,000 employers just last year. And your path, it's naturally going to grow. It's going to evolve. It's going to change. But that is where your mentors and advisors come in. So while everyone has a different path, the goal ultimately is that same goal of success, both in your time at PACE and beyond. Now to talk a little bit about our different schools, our law school that is up in White Plains, and then these five other schools you see are across our two undergrad campuses. Some important notes is that our average class size across all of our 100 plus majors is about 20 students. So you're never going to be in a lecture hall where you're one of hundreds and hundreds of students and you really get lost and you're just this number in a room. Instead, with smaller class size averages, you really get that more customized experience and those connections you'll make with your peers and that support from your professors. A little bit about our professors. They are experts in their fields. Over 90% of them have a PhD or the highest degree in their field of study. So they are folks who've literally been in these fields for decades and decades, again, making those connections that you want to make and helping you become a future expert yourself. Now, PACE students are very successful, not only in the classroom, but outside of it. Over 90% of PACE undergrads are employed or continuing education within six months after graduation. And you might be wondering how are students managing to accomplish that? And that is all through career services. They are the first connection you should make. Your PACE path should begin day one with you running on over to career services. They help you write all of your resumes, your cover letters, make sure you are prepared for interviews so that you can go on and complete one of those thousands of internships that students are completing every year. Average amount for our students is about three to four. So we really don't want you waiting until your senior year, but even having internships as early as your freshman year. Another reason that students are so successful is that New York City and Westchester County, we are home to more Fortune 500 companies than anywhere in the world. We also were born as a business school, so it is our bread and butter. Our students in our law school, or our law school, in our Lubin School of Business, they are incredibly successful because Pace was actually founded as a business school. Way back in 1906, we were founded by two accounting brothers looking to help their friends pass accounting tests. Fast forward today, we are among 3% of institutions accredited as both a business school and an accounting school worldwide. So that's a little bit about the success of our students to talk a little bit about our two campuses. Our New York City campus, it is actually a small close-knit community across giant New York City. We are within a five block radius. So if you choose to live on campus, like 75% of our incoming students do, you are not having to take a subway or a bus or train to get to your classrooms or your dorm rooms. And in terms of some of our information about our Westchester campus, they are home to our division two sports teams, our nursing program. So this would be your home campus. And they are also, we just recently added esports to this campus. And whichever campus you are on, again, we're making sure that whichever major you have, whichever path you have, you are loving your time as the PACE student. A little bit about our application process. If folks want to take a screenshot, this is what you can do. Very important to note, though, that we are test optional. You can apply on Common App or on our website. They're both the same application. So whichever of those two work best for you, that is the one you should pick. We also have a holistic approach. So we are looking at all of these factors and not just that one test score you took on one day. Important dates up here. I know we have potentially folks interested in performing arts. So if you are interested, that is your deadline for your program. Two dates I really like to point out is October 1st, FAFSA. Get that in, get it out of the way. The earlier 
you do, the more money you could be offered. May 1st, if you are looking to live on campus, that is how you guarantee that opportunity. Some financial aid, important to know that 97% of our students, they are receiving some type of financial aid. Now, last bit is if you have any questions, definitely contact us and hopefully I see you on campus for a tour soon. Thank you. Well, I ask that all our presenters come back on camera because we have uh, a live Q&A session. I have time to ask one question before we end our session today. All right, and we're gonna go in the same order as our um, presentation today. And my question to you is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Ramon, go ahead. All right, everybody. And so for those of you going through the college search process right now, I would say that between now and the time that you do make that decision, really, you know, take that look at yourself, right? Thinking about those things that will be important to you, that are important to you. Um, get to know the schools that you are speaking with, right? Do your research, come and visit our campuses when you can, right? And that uh, when it's time to make that decision, make it from a place of understanding that the place that you've decided to go uh, can help you get exactly where it is that you wanna be. Uh, my piece of advice as you're going through this process, um, speaking to the students, um, is make sure that you feel like the decision is, is truly yours. Um, you know, I, I understand, you know, and parents who are here, I understand, you know, you may want your kids to do this or do that. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you know, you really have to go with what you want um, and what you feel is going to make you the happiest. So um, make sure that you're, you're doing that due diligence to just really get an idea of what you feel like you really want to get into and, and make that choice for yourself. All right. Um, I, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Uh, and one thing I'll say to you as well is resist the temptation to believe in rankings. And I say this like we, UBC has wonderful rankings, but so does everyone. Everyone's number one at something in some ranking. So, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. And really, I think as the other two people said before me, what think about what's important to you. Don't don't just focus on a number that looks impressive to someone somewhere. Yeah, again, I also agree with everything that's been said, um, but definitely do your research, know what you want to do. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, especially for School of Visual Arts, all professionals are creative, so they're doing amazing work. Research into um, what professors you want to take, who do you want to work with, and definitely um, um, look them up and their work as well. Yeah, um, I totally agree. I guess my one piece of advice is ask questions. Um, every school has an admissions counselor who's kind of dedicated to your area and that's what we're here for. Um, we're here to answer all of your questions, big or small. Um, so reach out to us, ask questions and make sure you have all of the information that you need in order to make the best decision for you. All right, this is a favorite question for me because I'm a first gen student. I was undecided coming into school. I had no clue what I was doing. So I cannot echo the sentiment more of ask a bunch of questions. You are also the generation where you know everything online. So if you are not able to visit campuses in person, especially now, there are so many virtual options. Definitely start there so you can really start finding what is a need for me versus what is a want for me out of school. All great advice. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, when you close out this window, there will be a link to a very quick five minute survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back at this schedule and sign up for more sessions. And you are able to find this sessions recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. Thank you.